Hi, Dave. Thank you for being here. Hi, Ray. Thanks for having me. All right, Dave. So what are the mechanics of ice damming? And you were nice enough to send me a bunch of illustrations. So you tell me when to click, but um, educate us on the mechanics of ice damming. Sure. So ice damming occurs when you have snow melt on the roof surface. Um, and that snow melt drains down the roof plane where it gets over an area that's unconditioned and it refreezes. And that frozen snow melt backs up the roof. And if there's no protection under the roof, shingles can leak into the home. So on the illustration that you have uh, there, um, you see the melting snow up on the upper portion of the roof. And that upper portion of the roof is over an attic space, which if is properly insulated from the living space below it, the attic space should be relatively cold in temperature. Um, and if it's cold in temperature, it won't cause the snow to melt that quickly. However, if you have HVAC equipment in the attic space or heat escaping from the living space below into the attic space, say from lack of insulation or maybe the insulation has moved, that's going to cause the snow to melt on the upper portions of the roof. And as that snow melts, it drains down over uh, the lower portion of the roof towards the eave or the overhang. That's unconditioned space. There's no living space under the eave. Or, or in the eave of the or in the eave or overhang of the attic, um, and that, because it's unconditioned, it's cold, and that melting snow freezes up. Um, it causes those you know typical icicle structures that hang over the gutters um, or on the gutters, and then extend over the gutters. And and in real severe winters, we see really bad ice forming over the gutters. And that's the dam right there. It just continues to back up. And if you don't have ice and water shield or enough ice and water shield installed, um, that melting snow as it backs up the roof gets under the shingles and then leaks into the residence or the, the, uh, the roof system itself. And this could be an extreme example, right? Um, it could. And that's just, just you know, um, you know, probably a week's, it could be a week's worth of melting and refreezing. So and this is, go ahead. I was going to ask, so um, it seems like people get ice damming no matter what. Is it, you know, is it, is it mean that you have a defective roof automatically if you have ice damming or, or does, or is there just some conditions where you're going to get it no matter what? Yeah, it's not necessarily, the ice dam itself is not necessarily an indication of that the roof is defective. It's the leaks that it causes are the defective part. Um, so ice damming will sometimes, even if your attic space is properly ventilated, um, sometimes just the exposure and the temperatures that we get will cause an ice dam. Um, and again, if your roof isn't protected under the shingles with enough ice and water shield, then it's going to leak in. And that's the defective part. That's what you want to try to avoid. Um, you want to try to avoid having an ice dam altogether. And doing that, in, in, by doing that, you'll avoid the, the potential for leaking. And really, the only way to reduce the, the ice damming is if, if all exposure is out of the picture. Um, is to ensure that the attic space is as you know properly ventilated as possible. So I'm an association and I have an ice damming situation. Should I automatic and I, and I really we don't have it very often. Should mm -hmm. I absolutely immediately call you to come out or a contractor, or are you looking for more of a repetitive kind of issue? Um, repetitive issues or you know um, would tend to um, lead us to believe that there is a systemic problem with the construction or with the, with the ventilation system in the attic spaces um, so if it's like a you know if you get an ice dam during a very severe winter again that's probably an isolated situation because of the conditions just were very severe in that that you know during that one season or one period during that season um, but really, the goal is to, you know, make sure that the attic is is properly ventilated. And the the illustration you have there 
really kind of sums up the conditions that you want to see in an attic where you have sufficient attic insulation. You see below the attic insulation, you have the orange arrows, where the, which is the heat from the living space. The goal is to keep that heat in the living space and not in the attic and keep the attic space itself as close to freezing or close to temperature as, uh, as close to the same temperature as outside as possible. To, in doing so, you're reducing the likelihood that the snow will melt, that's the, the snow that's sitting on the roof will melt. And then you also sent me this one, which I thought was a good one. Yeah, so on the left, you'll see that's ice damming occurring as, as again, heat from the living space is allowed to to actually you know warm the roof surface that causes the melting of the snow as i said and it refreezes at the eve and it causes the ice dam and a potential leak if the roof is not protected uh, with ice and water shield um, on the right that's once the the attic insulation and ventilation system is addressed and you have good air circulation you have um, temperatures in the attic space as close as possible to the outside, um, you have a good functioning ventilation system, you're reducing the likelihood of the snow melting on the roof surface. If it doesn't melt, there's nothing for to refreeze at the eave. It's all still frozen, so you won't get the ice dam. Um, a proper attic ventilation system has to have, it has to be a balanced system. And by balanced, I mean you have to have enough airflow in through the soffit vent, which is at the bottom of the roof or the overhang, and um, airflow out of the roof, which is at the ridge of the roof. So in through the soffit and out through the ridge. And basically the airflow is supposed to wash the, you know, the underside of the roof decking to keep it as close in temperature to the outside as possible. Awesome. Um, so those are the mechanics of ice damming then. Um, and once the ice dam is there, there's not much that could be done with it until the weather cooperates, correct? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, um, there's process, there's things you can do, like maybe raking the snow off the roof, getting as much snow off the roof as possible, because if you, obviously, if you reduce the amount of snow, you're reducing the amount of material that can potentially melt and then refreeze. Um, I would never, you know, I don't condone or recommend anybody ever getting up on a roof when there's snow there, obviously, to, to, to shovel the snow off. They make rakes for that. Um, but that's, you know, that's really uh, the best way to minimize ice damming um, or, or leaks as a result of ice damming during, during those, during those uh, weather periods. Well, thank you so much, Dave, and thanks for all the great illustrations. You're welcome. Anytime.